Yo, what is going on guys? Alex7 here. It's been a while, but there's a reason for that and you'll find out tomorrow. But today we're going to talk about something that is pretty damn controversial and it's something that a lot of you guys have been talking about or even seeing comments of it or even other videos and that is about being worried about TDUSC and I'm just going to give my own thoughts and opinions on what everyone has been saying and also really what I personally feel about it from a level-headed but also super super big TDU fan so now for the new, let's get straight into it okay so the first thing is the map size am I worried about the map size or the location well let's talk about that right now so first things first I just want to let you guys know so far the only confirmed location that we have is Hong Kong Island so Technically, I'm not going to include the possibility of it being beyond Hong Kong Island, which I've already covered in all of my previous videos, but essentially, I'm just going to talk about Hong Kong Island because the area of that island is 78.59 kilometers squared, and we all know that Kiloton are going to rebuild this exact island at a one-to-one -one scale, so that area will be the same area in-game. And of course, that is pretty small, I'm not gonna lie to you. That is pretty much 15% of the size of Ibiza, and if you want to take it further, that is just about 5% the size of the whole TD2 game combined, when you combine Oahu as well as Ibiza. So, that is, <laughs> it's not exactly big, is it? And the funny thing is, the one thing that irks me is that when you compare it to Forza Horizon 5, Yes, Forza Horizon 5's map is bigger by area than TDUSC. And that's if we only get Hong Kong Island. We're just gonna have to wait and see about the truth behind that. And of course, you guys already know when Hong Kong Island was released live on stream, I wasn't exactly the happiest, but give me time to do some research on the island, give me time to understand, try to put my head in the shoes as to why they choose it. Well, Let's be honest, Hong Kong Island isn't that bad at all. In fact, especially if executed right, Hong Kong Island may be one of the best open world maps to date. But again, we're just gonna have to wait and see what K2 do in terms of that. I mean, I'm not going to go into too much detail about Hong Kong Island, but you guys already know. It has its super dense areas as well as its pretty damn big areas as well. And it definitely has everything you'd want to have in a TDU Island. It just isn't big. Which again, I'm not saying <clears throat> Tenerife, can Grand Canaria, either one of those kill it on for the next game. I'm not saying either one of those islands are better. And I mean, those definitely fit the TDU vibe, but obviously, I don't mind the change for now. I'm just gonna have to wait and see what Kiloton do. But I am in no way worried about the map size for TUSC, especially if we actually can travel beyond Hong Kong Island. But again, that's everyone's guess as it hasn't been confirmed yet. And if you want to see and hear more about Hong Kong Island, I'll leave two videos up. One by Leon JHK. I really hope I said his name right because that's off the top of my head. He made a brilliant video about Hong Kong Island and why he thinks it's good. And of course, I've done a very similar video to that as well. So I'll leave both those videos up as well as links down in the description below for you to go ahead and read more into that. But again, where I stand, I personally like Hong Kong Island and I can't wait to see what KT do. All right, now the big one, no gameplay. I see a ton of people commenting, yo, where's the gameplay? We're still waiting, checking their watch on their hand. This doesn't make sense because I don't have my watch on my hand, but checking the watch on my hand. Yo, everyone's talking about it. Where's the gameplay? The trailer that was just shown at Nakon Connect. Why was it CGI? Well, I mean, to put it plain and simple, <laughs> it's not ready you're right the game is over a year away from release and from not even a marketing standpoint but from a developing standpoint why would you show gameplay early when you know a year later down the road you will have gameplay that's way more showable than you do now I mean it just makes sense think about all the other games that have come out recently Forza Horizon 5 they didn't show gameplay until this summer and then the release ended up happening in November, so that was only about a four month difference. Need for Speed Heat, they showed gameplay I believe four months as well prior to release. Hot Wheels Unleashed, I think that was also four or five months before release. So many games don't show gameplay not only until the year they release, but only a couple of months prior to it releasing. And I mean, it just makes sense, especially from a standpoint when you want to make sure your first impression matters. Believe it or not, <laughs> first impression matters a ton and it would make way more sense for the Khan and KT to release gameplay footage of TDUSC when it's in its final stages and it's ready to get pushed for marketing. So am I worried that we got a CGI trailer from the past the Khan Connect? Hell no. And should you guys be worried? Hell no as well. All the cyberpunk talk that I've been hearing people compare TDSC to, it, it's just silly, you know? <laughs> You're setting your mind up for failure. <laughs> 
Yes, one company has done that, but that doesn't automatically mean that Akon and KT are going to do the same thing. It's just, you know, <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. But I'm sure we're going to get more information and more news about TDST leading into 2022. Because don't forget, Forza Horizon 5 releases this week if you do get it early or next week if you are just getting the regular edition. So why on earth would any TDSC info come out at the moment? It makes sense to do it after, which of course my CM interview will be happening before the end of 2022 and a dev interview happening sometime next year, which I can't wait to share more details with you guys about. But not having any gameplay isn't an indication of TDSC failing or TDC about to get cancelled. You just have to be patient and wait. Because of course, they'd want to show polished gameplay, which you wouldn't really see until a couple of months prior to launch. So whether that be E3 next year, or maybe in a con race a week, somewhere in April or spring, either one of those, we might see some gameplay, but definitely some more information will be happening in 2022. Not that far off from next year, guys, and we're not that far off from next year's spring. Time's gonna fly, and we will get gameplay eventually. Now, another thing I hear people talk about is KT's past. Now, I'm not gonna go too far deep into this, but obviously you guys have heard V Rally, which got a ton of bad reviews. Personally, on my note, I didn't <laughs> hate V Rally at all. I actually enjoyed it, but hey, I'm, I might just be your weird gamer or whatever you guys wanna say. But even taking a look at the WRC titles that KZ have primarily been doing, all the way from WRC 5, which I believe is the first WRC game that they did, to WRC 10, the change has been massive. Even from the physics, which I'll get into later, but the changes and the improvements that they've made from all the previous WRCs to now listening to player feedback because I have definitely been watching and seeing what they've been doing in the updates and everything, which speaking of updates, they've done an incredible job with the WRC updates as of lately and I can't wait to hear more information about WRC 11, like, seriously, I really do hope they end off the WRC series with a banger. But KT's past, yeah, you know, I mean, just like every other developer, yes, you can kind of put some weight onto it, but all I have really been seeing from KT is constant improvement from every title that they've released, as well as improvements in terms of bug fixes, how they go about things. I've definitely seen it all and I've researched it all, and personally, I'm not that worried about KT's past. In fact, most of the things in this video, I'm not really that worried about, except for one main thing, which I'll get to in a bit. So another thing that you guys worry about is why was this game marketed early? This kind of goes hand in hand with no gameplay, but hey, listen, TDSC was announced back last year in 2020. And if you were a fan of TDSC and you saw that, and you also got connected through the Discord, you'd know that they also took in a ton and I mean a ton of suggestions about the game. That being from not only the car list, but features people wanted to see, things people hated about TD1, things people loved about TD1, hated and loved about TD2, etc, etc. They took in a ton of information, and the community manager, I gotta say, he's a pretty cool guy as well. But you have to understand from a marketing aspect, a game franchise like TDU hasn't seen the light of day for pretty much 10 years. And compared to the games such as Need for Speed, Forza Horizon, you'd want to make sure you get out your marketing early because to this day, and I promise you to this day, there are still people who have no idea that a sequel to TD2 is coming out. Literally, there are definitely so many people that have yet to remember or even find out yet. Now the one downside to marketing early is the fact that we may be getting very scarce drops of information until we lead up to the game's release. which. As you can clearly see, up until now is currently what's happening. It makes sense that they drop information at key events, and then once we get into the actual full-on promotion of the game leading up to its release, we'll get a lot more information a lot more sooner. We just have to be patient, and then one day, it's just all gonna start. We're gonna get a bunch of TDU news throughout the new year, and I can't wait for that to happen. But let's talk about another thing that some people are worried about, and I'm going to give my two cents on, and that's physics. Now physics, believe it or not, is one of the most least things I'm worried about because KT have done a phenomenal job in WRC 10's physics and force feedback on the wheel. Literally on the screen right now, I'll probably put up some gameplay of it, but you guys can see. I have a ton of fun, the force feedback is incredible, and that's an understatement of what's happening in WRC 10, and not only that, they also fixed the controller gameplay in WRC 10 when you compare it to WRC 9. I personally love the controller gameplay a lot more, but because of that, I'm pretty certain that they're not gonna mess up TDU SE's physics at all, especially when you compare it to TDU 2. Might I also remind you guys that there are two key people from 
Eden games that now work at Kiloton on TDUSC. One of them is Alan Janu, you already know he worked on TDU1 and TDU2, and Dave Daloza, who was the technical director in TDU2. So it makes sense that the physics, they both know the mistakes and what the community said, it would make sense they take that information and create the better physics in TDUSC. I really do hope hardcore mode does make it back though, I, it all depends on how the physics is mainly set up in the base game, again we're just gonna have to wait for more information about that, but like I said, physics is the least thing on my worry list. Let's talk about something that is kind of high up there, that's microtransactions. Now microtransactions in a gaming world today aren't exactly the best, take a look at The Crew 2 for example, that's personally one of the reasons why I'm not that big of a fan of that game. Now you do hope Nakon and KT know what they're doing when it comes to microtransactions and DLC or I should say paid DLC in TDUSC. So the many things such as having the ability to buy casino currency within real life currency or be able to buy a lot of cars or use car packs for that matter and be able to buy in that game, stuff that sets you up for pretty much a total boost in the gameplay especially when you compare it to an online game mode like TDUSC. I mean TDU is known for working hard for your cars, it would take you sometimes weeks to be able to afford the car that you wanted your whole entire life in the game and because of that it just made TDUSC so much more fun. It kind of put a whole new twist onto the word grind in my opinion because when you say grind in today's current situation the grind is normally boring but the grind in TDU2 I found it was fun, especially with the vast amount of missions, the vast amount of ways to make money, etc, etc. But I really do hope stuff like welcome packs that grants you a ton of money in game isn't happening microtransaction based in TDUSC. Again, fingers crossed, that's probably the most worried thing that I am on this list. Now another thing you guys are worried about is the Nintendo Switch setback. Now take a look at WRC9 for example compared to PC and on the Switch. It looks pretty beautiful on PC and it is a very doable on the Switch. Now I don't think if we even do get crossplay, the Switch would be included in said crossplay. But I personally don't think that we're going to see a lot of setbacks with TDSC being on the Switch when you compare it to PC or PS5 or Xbox Series X. I don't think it's going to provide a setback, I think KT know what they're doing, especially since they've already done a ton of ports on the WSC game to Switch and the PC version and the next gen version still look pretty nice, especially when you compare it to other games among its same genre. So I'm not that worried about any of the setbacks that this Nintendo Switch will create for the next gen consoles, it's definitely not something in my main head. But one thing that is in my main head and probably last thing I want to talk about on this list is houses and dealerships. Now dealerships I think is a pretty obvious one and I also believe it was even confirmed in the TDUSC Discord that dealerships will be coming to TDUSC. But the one thing that we are uncertain of is houses, mainly because nothing has been said about them. All we really know is our player will have the Solo Crown Hotel. It doesn't mention if we can get other estates beyond the Solo Crown Hotel. It doesn't mention anything else other than the Solo Crown Hotel, which I'm a bit worried about. But when you take a look at Hong Kong Island, there's so many places that you can actually add said houses that I don't think K2 would miss this huge opportunity and something that is a huge, huge, huge aspect of the TD vibe. I mean, TD1 definitely had houses right and even TD2 went further and made you be able to go into your house, invite houses. I just don't want one place where a player could get this one house such as the whole Solar Crown Hotel and end up having everyone live on it. It'd be so much nicer if we can buy properties beyond just the Solar Crown Hotel but fingers crossed KT know what they're doing and I'm sure we're gonna get this confirmed or denied to us next year in 2022. But that's all my personal worries about the TDUSC game so far. Let me know down in the comment section below what you guys think about it. Is there anything I didn't cover? Any worries you guys have about the game? Let me know. I'll probably reply to you, talk to you about it. And, you know, kind of hear about everyone else's thoughts and opinions. But it's just my thoughts on if I'm worried about TDSC and if some of the aspects should worry you guys. That's all I really have to say for today's video. I'll see you guys tomorrow with a live stream. Ooh, yes, I said that right. Live streams are coming back. I can't wait for that. Other than that, I'm out seven. I'll see you guys in another video. I'm out.